has been saying that Logan ripped the necklace from Raven's neck in his hotel suite. Well, it just couldn't have happened that way. See, the necklace was put here on the mantel. The clasp became lodged in this crack somehow, and when the necklace was picked up again, this piece must have broken off. Then you have it. Proof that Raven gave the necklace back to Logan in this room, just as she said she did. And if this piece matches the piece with the diamonds on it, it proves that your lovely wife could never have worn it out of here. Well, at least not very easily, could she? Well, it sounds promising, but if we can find some fingerprints of Logan either on this mantelpiece or on this, we'll be able to prove Raven's innocence. And on the gun. And on the gun. Do you expect to find Logan's fingerprints on the gun? Generally, there are four sets of prints on it. Yours, mine, Raven's, and there were a smudged set of fingerprints. I believe that when the police identify those prints, they will turn out to be Logan's. Wasn't with my permission. 
Look, I've got a couple of detectives out there trying to round him up right now. I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything. So long. Aren't you lucky you caught me in a good mood? <laughs> yeah, well, if uh, we're in the same frame of mind, this should be a real knee slapper. Any word on Whitney and Chris? Not yet. Then why aren't you out looking for I them? I just came from taking Preacher down to meet the bank manager, Mr. Ledgar. All right, let me guess. Let me guess. He positively identified as a man impersonating Rick Mead and who got into the safety deposit box? You got it. Yeah. The bank and Rick Mead are both pressing charges against him. You, uh, read his rights? Yep. All right. Do you need a court-appointed lawyer? Nope. He says he's already got one. Who? Marty Stillwater. Are you calling? No. No, he's uh, really down in the dumps. Don't blame him. Charged with bank fraud, I'd be down in the dumps myself. Yeah, well, it's not just that, you see. Uh, Preacher just here, he feels responsible. He says he's let the Whitney's down. I mean, he's got this idea that he could have saved Raven. and he still insists that she's innocent. Dumb. Look, 12 men and women on that jury just didn't happen to agree with his assessment of Raven's innocence. And Rick Mead testified and he said everything that was on that paper from the safety deposit box and nobody believed it. All right, look, if he doesn't want to call his lawyer, I think he'll call his dad. I mean, he doesn't care what happens to himself, but I think his dad would like to know. Yeah. The day you came to work for me, you promised you would tell me nothing but the truth. Do you still stand by that? As the Lord is my witness. Do you know anything about Logan's death you haven't told the police? No, ma'am, I don't. Well, then, there's no way that either Detective Egan or my nephew could possibly suspect you. Well, yeah. Hello. Preacher? Yes, yeah, he's here, just a minute. It's your son. Oh, Preacher? What did you say? Where are you? Jail? Has this got something to do with that little misunderstanding you had down at the bank? All right, all right, I agree with you. Seven to ten in the slam is not just a little misunderstanding. It, it, no, 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 listen. You tell those cops down there to hold their horses. I'm on my way. And you keep your mouth shut until I get down there with a the, with the mouthpiece, you hear? Okay, yeah. Oh. It's... It's get the Emerson's week again. I gotta get my coat. What's that? Well, Matt Mallory's got the preacher down at the station house. I'm sorry, but uh, I, I, I gotta leave. Uh, if you'll excuse me, Jeremy. I will not. Geraldine. I will not allow you to take public transportation in this weather. My car is in the underground garage. I'll drive. Yes, ma'am. Matt, I like you a lot. And I know you're not cut from the same mold, but your sister... Your sister has ignored Jeremy since he got here. How does she pretend that someone... Well, I mean, someone that she's been intimate with doesn't even exist anymore. Well, I can't save every man who has fallen prey to my sister. But can't you talk to her and make her stop? Liz has her own unique way of handling men. Yeah, it stinks. I agree. Wait, Jody, where are you going? To give Jeremy some support. You know, Beth, what is it with your sister? She's pretty. She's intelligent. She certainly doesn't have to scrape up dates in bars. Teeny, no, I really don't think this is any of our concern. Your sister really gets to you, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. She really does.